All right, welcome back. It's the 5A matchup that's been highly anticipated by the entire state. The one-two punch, top-ranked Spanish Fort hosting second-ranked Jackson. These two teams are like mirror images of one another, both 12-0 and on the year, and both have scored more than 500 points on the season. As always with our Game of the Week, our Russell Colburn brings you the very best from Spanish Fort. Russell, kick it off for us, will you? Simone, it's supposed to get harder when you get to the playoffs, right? Well, in three games, here we sit at the quarterfinals. Spanish Fort has outscored their opponents 146 to 13. Video game numbers. Let's give you guys the highlights here. We got Matthew Jordan warming up for this one. The quarterback for Jackson suffered a knee injury, a, nag, a nagging knee injury in Briarwood. We wondered how effective he would be in this game. Not effective early on. Jordan intercepted by DeAndre uh, Dondre Tom, Tom, Towns, excuse me, off the tip. He was going for his number 15. Ends up with the Toros number 15. Uh, Spanish Fort field goal after that three nothing Toros. All right, Jackson, Jackson driving again. Jordan is picked in the end zone. Look at the ups for Eugene Leach. That kills that drive. Question the play call the throw messy situation for the Aggies there okay so Tyler Johnson to his favorite target Sammy Harris the West Welker of the Eastern Shore has it down in Aggies territory down the sideline I think we've seen that throw a couple times all right Johnston TD run they do this so well calls his own number he's in 10 to nothing now let's let's toss things over to his cousin that's because he'll have the third interception of Jordan in the half JD Campbell he's returning it into Aggie territory and from there Johnston takes it in on Another TD run, 17 to nothing. Spanish Fort at the half. Johnston just won't go down, crawls into the end zone. More of the same in the second half. We have another Johnston touchdown run, 23 nothing on the missed extra point. Now, uh, no Johnston. He leaves with some cramps, I'm told. Javon Brown in at quarterback. He hands the ball to Mike Howard. That's a good idea. Mike Howard goes right up the gut, down the sidelines, and in. 30 to nothing, Spanish Fort to that point. Your final is 36 to 6. Spanish Fort is moving on. We just heard they will take on Sarah Land. Coach, I'm joined now by Mark Freeman, head coach of Spanish Fort. Sarah Land. Sarah Land, Jeff Kelly's a great coach. That's a great place over there, and uh, we're looking forward to it. And, and uh, my. My team and my coaches, I can't say enough about the great job they've done this year. Things clicked, you know, tonight like they have all season, all playoffs. What was it? Was it Johnson? Was it the ground game, the defense? We felt like coming in, we was going to have to run the ball. We worked all week on running the football and getting in formations that we could, we thought would be conducive to be successful running against them. Co uh, Jeremy Sullivan does a great job on defense. We, we felt like everything that we were going to try to do they would have an answer and they've worked on it. So we felt like going in, be sound and be solid and just try to get a head on a head and, and give the ball to the running backs. We had Johnson leave the game in the second half. You said just cramps, everything looking good there? Yeah, he's fine. I, I don't know if it was cramps or if he was sick. I don't know that yet. But he, uh, he did a great job tonight. Players played around him, and I can't say enough about our defensive coaches. And just just a blessed night for the Toros. Coach, congratulations. Enjoy this one. Thank, Thank you so much, much for spending some time with us. Yes, sir. Thank That's you. 22 straight, Simone. Let's go back to you. All right, Russell, congrats to Freeman and the Toros. Now here's a look at the 5A brackets. We have Sarah Land moving on like we talked about. Also, Spanish Fort, number one ranked Spanish Fort is going to play Sarah Land, so looking forward to that game as well. Here we go. If there's one team in the area that has the most pressure to perform every year, it's McGill Tulin. The Jackets fell short to Blunt this year and lost the region crown for the first time in three years. However, MACT was the only team in 6A Region 1 to advance past the first round of the playoffs. Tonight, the Jackets had to hit the road to play Smith Station in hopes of advancing to the state semifinals for just the second time in school history. So, out to Smith's we go. And it was packed. Checks out round three. Have fun on Black Friday. You can run the ball while we run the ball. Well, we'll see if that'll happen next week. Let's take a look at the highlights. Here we go. McGill up 3 0. And Smith is going to score. This is Devontae Marshall with the touchdown run. Smith will lead there 7 to 6 later. McGill down. And check out the catch here by Marshall, this time in the air. And he's in for the score. Smith would lead 14 to 6, but don't count out the Yellow Jackets on the road. Spencer Ruggs in just before halftime. 14 13 there. Let's take a look at the score now. And this is final, folks. McGill is moving on to the semifinals 28 to 21. Here's a look at the 6 8 semifinal bracket. McGill Tulin's going to move on. And as I heard earlier, Auburn was leading. But later on in the show, we'll let you know who McGill Tulin's opponent will be in the state semifinals.
Now, after losing four of their first six games, Bayside Academy has beaten the odds in advance to the quarterfinals tonight. The Admirals lost came to Strawn in week six, and tonight, to have a shot at the semifinals, Bayside would have to get a little revenge against Strawn on the road. Let's check out these highlights. Here we go. Strawn fans pumped up, but Bayside's going to score first. Hunter Slater in for the score. 7-0. Bayside leads it, but Strawn's going to come out strong. Check out the diving touchdown there by Devin Scott in the four-yard run later. 32-yard run here. The quarterback keepner, keeper excuse me, by Roland Tensaw. Strawn would score again and later. It's all Strawn. Unfortunately, Bayside's going to go down in this one. Let's take a look at the final here. And Strawn's going to win big time. 42-21 to 21 over Bayside. They are moving on. Here's a look at that bracket. Like we just mentioned, Strawn moving on. And we know that Leeds also upset T.R. Miller. There you have it. So it's going to be an awesome matchup. Neither team from our area, but great seasons from both Bayside and from T.R. Miller. All right, a huge rivalry game in two-way quarterfinals tonight. It was Mobile Christian taking on Washington County. Now, earlier this season, the boys from Chatham got the best of the Leopards. However, Mobile Christian running back Tyler Rogers went down, hurt that game. Now, Rogers playing better than ever with six touchdowns last week. Is a healthy now. Could he make the difference in tonight's game? Let's take a look at the highlights. Mobile Christian visiting Washington County. We have Washington County kids loving the game. Here we go. First score here is going to be by Washington County. The boys from Chatham would take a 7-0 lead early. Fans loving it, of course. But don't count out Mobile Christian. Here you have it in the air, which you don't see very often from the Leopards. They're going to score. This game would go back and forth. Of course, rivalry games, you have to expect that. And Washington County is going to be too strong at home. There you have another score for Washington County on the road. Let's take a look at the score here. Washington County is going to win big, 56 to 42. Great. Uh, season there for the Leopards. Very great job by Neil Evans and company. Of course, great season to Tyler Rogers. But Washington County is the team that's moving on. And they're going to play Sweetwater. It's going to be an awesome matchup. Of course, we'll have that next week for you.